Recently, Spin Launch, a startup company developing an alternative method of launching spacecraft into orbit, successfully tested its first prototype. Preparation for this test started last year when Spin Launch moved its headquarters to a massive warehouse surrounding Long Beach Airport. This new headquarter was a fitting place for the company to breathe new life into an old and outdated idea, that of using giant mechanical slings to hurl rockets into orbit. The idea sounds impossible, but that's the big, crazy genius idea behind this young startup. To make this work, Spin Launch uses a centrifuge arm spinning at an incredible rate, producing a huge amount of momentum capable of throwing the payload into space at a supersonic speed. At that speed, objects could be flung into space on their own. What is actually so impressive about this idea is that we currently have only one method to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, using rockets. And sadly, launching a rocket into the sky is so expensive and not eco-friendly. So, in today's video, we'll break it down to see does Spin Launch's new concept really work? And if so, is it worth the time and effort to develop such a system? The idea of launching objects into space without using rockets isn't a new idea. Finding another alternative to rockets will be the ultimate solution to the extremely expensive cost of launching something into space. It's true that we have developed our rockets to make them more efficient, but some other engineers and scientists see rockets at all as an inefficient way to get something into space. The issue is that, in order to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, rockets consume most of the fuel during the first few minutes of the flight. A solution for these kinds of problems worth billions of dollars, if not more, which sent many space scientists and engineers into a new world of research and development, proposing new methods to launch payloads without using rockets. The man behind today's idea is the serial entrepreneur Jonathan Yanni, who ran Spin Launch in a former microprocessor plant in Silicon Valley down the road from Google for years. Now, Spin Launch is a private corporation that has some of the top-tier investors behind them, like Airbus Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, and the US Department of Defense. The story began in 2016, when Spin Launch developed its first centrifuge prototype. At 40 feet in diameter, which is not large enough to lift a rocket into space, however, it was large enough to test the concept. The system consists of a long arm, called a tether, which extends from an oil slick bearing powered by a motor, and the payload attaches to the end of the tether. To withstand the enormous strain it will experience, the tether is made of ultra-strong materials like Kevlar or carbon fiber. Once the payload is spinning at launch speeds, an exit port in the centrifuge will open for a fraction of a second, sending the rocket shooting out. According to patents filed by the company, a counterbalance spinning opposite the rocket gets released at the same time, preventing the tether from becoming unbalanced and vibrating into oblivion. At the same time, the rocket coasts for about a minute and ignites its engines at roughly 200,000 feet. At that altitude, there's hardly any atmosphere pushing against the rocket, so a minute-long engine burn is about all it takes to boost the vehicle to orbital speeds of around 17,500 miles per hour, which is very comparable to the SpaceX launch vehicle Falcon 9. Then another burn is needed, which would last 10 seconds only, to slide the rocket into orbit around Earth. In 2018, after nearly two years of hard work, Spin Launch's team had built its first real centrifuge, and it was time to finally see if this would work. We were all huddled into a room about 50 feet away behind a bunch of monitors and cameras, Yanni says. They ensured that all systems were in good working order, and then went for it. We just hit the throttle and broke the world record for the fastest rotational system, he added. In the following years after this milestone, the team ran dozens of tests. Most of them were to improve the system and some to allay investors' and customers' fears. They need to convince all shareholders that a payload could withstand the extreme forces in space. Although it's small scale, the team successfully sent solar cells, radio systems, telescope lenses, batteries, GPS modules, and control computers thrown at high speeds they all survived with little or no damage. In one of several tests, Yanni used his iPhone as a payload to prove the concept. He attached it to the tether and spun it up until it experienced forces 10,000 times stronger than gravity. Afterward, he used the phone to FaceTime a colleague. 
Every test, however small it is, was a step toward space. In October this year, Spin Launch tested its second prototype of the system, to launch a test vehicle at supersonic speeds using the accelerator, which was around one-third the size of the planned system, even though it is still larger than the Statue of Liberty. They were able to recover the test vehicle, and it's now preparing for the next phase of testing. Yanni is confident that the system will meet its performance expectations, and they'll soon start to line up customers. Spin Launch plans to charge under $500,000 per launch. And Yanni says he wants to work with companies that want to launch dozens, if not hundreds of satellites. Launching one satellite into orbit would be a huge milestone for the company. The history of private launch companies is largely a history of failure. But like some space-age Sisyphus, Yanni seems to embrace the struggle. Space exploration demands the boldness to venture into the unknown, and in Spin Launch's case, the unknown is vast. The payoff, however, is nothing less than opening a new door to the cosmos. What do you think? Do you see Spin Launch's idea could change the space industry? Let's discuss it down below. Thanks for watching.